Silicon Valley Future Forum. Hi. Um, today I'm going to talk about how cars get cognition using a combination of six-dimensional localization and precise 3D maps. So um, irrelevant of the autonomous cars, as humans, whenever we go to a new area or to a new city where we haven't been before, the first thing we do is we take out our phones, um, put a Google Maps or Apple Maps app, and put the directions where we want to go. So the first thing you do after you put directions is you look around your surroundings. You see where you are on the map. Um, that is called localizing on a map. And once you are localized, only then can you start using the map. Similarly, um, in the autonomous car ecosystem, the eyes of the cars are sensors like cameras, lidars, radars, which give it information about uh, what it's, uh, what, uh, what's around the car. Then the cognitive layer of the autonomous car includes um, precise localization and mapping that processes all this gigabytes of vision sensor data and makes sense of it and tells the car um, what it means, uh, what its surroundings are, which infrastructure is important to it, such as um, which signal light it should stop at, if there is a stop sign coming up. And once it has all that information, uh, it can make a routing decision whether to stop, to go, to turn, or to slow down. So combination of localization and maps, uh, what it allows you to do is to project map information and field of view of sensors, such as cameras or LIDARs. Um, and this video shows um, how an autonomous car would be seeing the world when it's driving. So unlike um, two-dimensional or three-dimensional localization, the autonomous car actually moves in all six dimension, which is front, back, right, left, up, and also in roll, pitch, and yaw, so similar to airplanes. Um, now, if you have six-dimensional localization, then you can fuse the 3D maps and give cognition to autonomous cars. Um, this is a video uh, we shot um, in Palo Alto. So if the car knows which lane it's driving on or which lane it's occupying precisely, then it can know limitations to the lane on the left and the lane on the right. Um, in this case, it can go on the right, but it cannot go on the left. All the relevant map information is projected into the car's LIDAR, camera, radar, or any other vision sensors it might be using. As it is going um, to an intersection, it knows that it can perform a left turn. Um, and these are what we call trigger points. Um, the car knows there's so much information around it, um, gigabytes of information, millions of pixels. But it knows exactly which pixels it should concentrate its attention on. And that is what I mean by cognition, which is um, reducing the cognitive load on the brain of the decision engine uh, by telling it precisely where it should look at. It's similar to having a friend sitting next to you and telling you, hey, look at that stop sign, look at that signal light, um, if there is a pedestrian crossing coming up. And it's especially helpful at intersections because at complex intersections, even in this case, there are multiple signal lights. Um, and it's one problem for autonomous cars is to identify which signal light it should actually be looking at. Um, if you go to New York and San Francisco, there may be intersections with 10 or 20 signal lights. Um, so we tell the car exactly which pixels in the camera or which points in the LiDAR space will tell it the state of the signal light. And what that results in is reducing the computational requirements from 10x to almost 1,000x in certain cases. Um, so instead of carrying compute, the trunk full of compute, you can run an autonomous car with consumer-grade hardware um, if you have precise localization and mapping, uh, which is what we are terming as cognition for autonomous cars. So 
Uh, we mentioned earlier that we utilize sensor fusion techniques to localize a car. Um, in fact, we utilize sensor fusion in pretty much everything we do. The first state of sensor fusion is when we combine the data from a GPS and inertial measurement unit to create a trajectory of the car. Um, then we fuse that data by the LiDAR data, which is, comes from LiDAR sensors. Um, and that fusion gives us a point cloud, uh, which is similar to a video, but it is in three dimension, and it has intensity values. From this point cloud, we can create a 3D semantic map, uh, which includes the information about the features around the car, such as lane markings, signs, signals, and the relationship between which lane you're in, which sign is important for a car, which signal it should focus on. The other map that we create from the same point cloud is a localization map, and we use advanced voxel and signature techniques to reduce the fingerprint, uh, reduce the size of this map. So generally, the reference localization map um, has is me megabytes or gigabytes per kilometer or per mile of size. Uh, but at civil maps, we have reduced the reference map size to kilobytes per mile. And what that allows you to do is to stream the map over cellular internet. So as the car is moving, it can get map updates using cellular internet. And that is important for autonomous driving because for humans, you can have a refresh rate of three months, six months, or up to three years um, to refresh a map. But for autonomous cars, the map needs to be refreshed as things are changing. For example, if a particular exit is not is blocked, then the autonomous car needs to know within minutes or hours that exit is blocked. Otherwise, it might go to a, that particular exit and find out it's blocked and not be able to do anything. In extreme cases, it could also not see the exit and try to um, go to the highway or to the exit. Um, so that's why uh, we have focused on reducing the size of the reference map so that the, we can achieve minutes refresh rate. And the combination of localization and 3D semantic maps allows you to project the map information in the field of view of a front-facing camera, a LiDAR, or radar. The image on the right you see is the output of fusing uh, the map with localization. And it shows you the current lane occupied in blue, the lanes the car can go on in green, and the upcoming signal lights and signs in green. Um, so I showed you an animated video earlier about how the cars see the world. Um, if you can play this video, this is something I took in Michigan a um, couple of months back. And it shows a car being localized at uh, over 70 miles an hour on a highway. And uh, we are using combination of different localization techniques um, in this case. Because you'll see on the video feed that it was at a highway which had very limited information around it. So we are using a combination of 3D voxel matching from point cloud, feature matching of lanes and signs, um, integration with the car's onboard diagnostics, as well as the inertial sensors to fill in the gaps. So if you see the, on the bottom right corner is the video feed from a GoPro in the car. All these bu bubbles you are seeing in green are voxel matches, which is the compressed environment, environment information. Um, if you look at the bubbles in the blue are lane marking and sign matches. So this is, uh, we are utilizing sensor fusion of feature-based localization as well as voxel-based localization to localize a car. And uh, you can see that every second it's getting multiple matches from orthogonal sensors. And this is required if you want to precisely keep the car localized at high speeds. Um, and we are able to achieve hundreds of matches or thousands of matches per minute because of the lightweight Finger, uh, data finger footprint of our reference map. So here, if in this section, you'll see that as the trees around the car increase, the green matches, green bubbles start increasing. And when you go to an open area where there are no trees or buildings, um, 
then you see more of the blue bubbles. And when we reach this intersection, um, I'm going to switch to the map projection view um, that will project the HD map on the field of view of the car's LiDAR. I think we can go back to the presentation. So in the previous videos, um, like I was talking that we are, we are utilizing voxel-based hashing, feature-based localization, input from inertial measurement unit, the OBD input from car steering and throttle, as well as uh, introducing structure from motion through visual odometry. And combination of all of these techniques are fed into a Kalman filter which gives the location of the car in six dimensions. Along with location, the, another important aspect the car needs to know is the covariance or the inverse of the confidence um, of that location. And that is important because a robot, like a car, um, not only needs to know where you are, but it also needs to know how confident you are of that information you're providing. In case the vision sensors are not that confident, then the covariance value increases. And in that case, the car knows that it cannot trust the localization output, and it can switch to the real-time ADAS methodologies. And if you think about the 3D map, um, we also look at a map as a sensor. Because if you co combine localization and mapping, then you are able to project map information. And if you project, if you use a projected map, then that goes as a sensor input into the car's decision engine. Because the car can then look at particular pixel values in the sensor to look at the state of the signal or pedestrian, rather than looking at the entire sensor feed. And uh, as, uh, as a company, our goal is to provide this cognition uh, to uh, our various customers and partners. And uh, starting with San Francisco, we are planning to operate uh, a map exchange where we provide this cognition to companies um, that want to build and operate and test autonomous cars. And uh, we hope that uh, our cognition uh, will reduce the amount of um, computation and the cost and hurdles in autonomous car and expedite um, continental scale autonomous cars in the near future. Uh, thank you. Silicon Valley Future Forum.